I feel like there's this weird, interesting spectrum on the web mm -hmm. where on one end is content and the other is app, but it blends at a certain point. Blend. And it's that it blending does. part that I find is always interesting where yeah. I, I'd hate first to be building something in a way that then search can't understand that piece. Right, because you want to find the content that lives inside the applications and you want right. to still find the applications, right? Right. Hello and welcome to SEO Mythbusting. Today I have Dion Almer with me. What do you work on? I work in the web developer ecosystem group here at Google. And so that's within the Chrome organization. But we work across Chrome and Search uh, and ads and all of the different uh, areas of Google that care about the web. Uh, personally, my passion is about the ecosystem, hence the name. So it's about mm -hmm. looking at the health of the web and what are we doing to really help developers, but even beyond developers, uh, hence the SEO world mm -hmm. and the like, uh, to make sure that people being successful, right? So that could be That's successful awesome. in building amazing user experiences, mm -hmm. but it's also successful in actually being able to pay the bills. Uh, and <laughs> so they can keep making those amazing user experiences. <laughs> that is great. So when I have you here today, I would love to talk about SEO and the web platform going forward. So we want to look into like what are the new use cases, what are the things that are coming up next, and what are the things that we from the search side should be preparing for, let's say. Do you have any highlights that you want to want to talk about? Yeah, so uh, I gave a keynote at the Chrome Dev Summit in November 2018. Right. And as, as kind of going through sharing all of these great, amazing web platform updates mm -hmm. and tooling updates, in the back of my mind, you know, you're always thinking about like, are we getting closer to search and, mm -hmm. and helping right. the world, or are we, uh, are we causing the, more problems going on? Yeah, so I'm actually really curious thing. to get some of your thoughts on some of these items. Amazing. Do you have any specific things that you would like to address there? Like, is there any showcases or anything that we we should look into from a search perspective. Yeah, so um, one case study actually that we showed was uh, Pinterest. Uh, and it really got me thinking because you know they came along and their growth team built this new PWA. That's that fantastic. Was, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like the performance is top notch, it's a great experience. So they've got this great PWA that's really exciting. Then they've got their kind of regular desktop site. They've got, they're using AMP for different mm -hmm. things. And so if I'm a team like that, how do I like, I've got all of these kind of different sites in a way, mm -hmm. which is almost like the opposite of the, the promise of the web <laughs> at times, right? We like build it once and it yeah, was over. Yeah. So like, which of these, how do, what's the one that I want to give to search? Like, how do yeah, I think that, about that? That's a, that's a really good question. So I think generally speaking, if you have the same content in multiple ways that you present them to the user, find out the one that is most likely to apply to as many people as possible. So if you have one specific thing for, let's say, like sign up users to actually remix it or something, that might not be the thing that you want to surface to search. Because me coming into it from outside and not having ever used it, and I might not even be able to use the feature. And then it's like, why am I getting here? Yeah. So try to think of what are people typing into a search bar? What is the purpose that they're coming from? Um, I want to see this, this uh, image board that Dion has created for Chrome Dev Summit. So I might type in like image board Dev Summit. And then I want to get the PWA probably because it loads fastest and it is available uh, even if I'm offline and stuff like that. So give me that. Um, but also link to the AMP version because then we can also show the AMP version uh, next to it. So it is not really a ranking signal, so we might see like different rankings there, depending on the purpose and the, the user characteristics, what they type into, into the search bar. But if you link them, then we can make the decision for you, so you do not have to worry about that kind of stuff. Um, if you then have a desktop site as well, that is great as well. If it's responsive, that's even better. Uh, if it's not responsive, then give us an, an alternate link so that we can decide, OK, so this is the Google crawler that uses mobile first, so we're probably going to highlight the PWA experience over the desktop site versus if someone's uh, using the desktop site, we might give them the other version rather than that. But we are trying to make the right decisions for your users so that you don't have to worry about these things. But strategically yeah. speaking, give us a canonical that makes sense uh, to as many people as possible so that we can surface the related information based on what people are looking for rather than any differences in the presentation. Got it. Cool. The other thing that comes up a lot is um, uh, integrating our tools together mm. instead of having it in silos, right? So we've 
already been working. We are, we've got Lighthouse over mm -hmm. here. We had PageSpeed Insights. Mm -hmm. We've got Search We've got all of these different pieces. Yeah. Uh, we announced a Chrome Dev Summit, the unification of some of these. Yes. So PageSpeed Insights now uses Lighthouse and, yes. and the like, and that's super exciting. Um, Wayfair, another company, built this uh, performance portal to kind of mm -hmm. help the team make sure that they don't regress. Because right. we see that a large percentage of the times people were like, do an investment, have a quick burst, right? Get their performance good, and then and it will slowly go yeah. down. So they they have this this awesome performance culture yeah. that's trying to fix that. Um, and I was just looking at that and thinking about it's yet another example. Of like here's all the performance stuff. Couldn't we be surfacing the kind of SEO pieces into that too? How do we bridge these worlds together that is a so really both sides question. can kind of see the the mm. other things that are going on? So. Lighthouse gets more SEO ad audits, which is great, I think. Uh, that probably at some point feeds into PageSpeed Insights as well. Search Console integrates some of these metrics as well, because performance is also important for search and discoverability. Right. We want to like reward the content that gets you that gets the user quicker into the content rather than having to wait forever until something loads, especially on mobile networks. But for external tools and external companies who want to dig into the data, I think Search Console is a great way of already doing that in a, in a packaged way. But, but we are working on ways of integrating external parties and external content providers and platforms um, to get the data that we are collecting already for Search Console. So for instance, if you know um, one of the many larger content management systems or platforms that exist out there where people are creating content, we don't want them to have to specifically go into Search Console and now like deal with the interface they're used to and then right. deal with something new. That's why we are bringing the data into these platforms. And eventually, hopefully, once we have gathered enough information to understand how the data is used and what data is necessary and, and uh, meaningful to external parties, we will open these interfaces. There will literally be an API to integrate the data from Search Console, which gives you information as a, a like click-through rate, how many impressions you get from Search, how many um, clicks you get from Search all this kind of thing, how many of your pages are indexed, actually, because not all of it might be indexed. There might be right. an issue. You might have a markup problem, right? We want to surface this where people already are. That can be an IDE integration. That can be something like Wayfair does. Yeah. Um, but at this point in time, we are too early on to open that up to the general public. But eventually, that's going to happen. That's so exciting. And some people are talking about how like they want to understand the the unknown things. Like mm -hmm. they want to talk about like what's if I do this, that, or the other, how does it affect my customer lifetime value right. and these things? Mm -hmm. And we keep running into something on the performance side where uh, they'll do this work and they'll make something that's a lot better but their metrics actually show in the field that it's slower. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. in the lab, it's faster. It's obviously faster. I can yeah, see it's so yeah. much better. How's it slower? And then it's because the reach that they got just totally changed. So these people right. on like 2G networks yes. in emerging markets that can actually really use targets. this now. Then you're comparing apples to oranges. Right. So you've got all of these new customers. Mm. And so you know, it, the mean metric isn't the thing that matters mm -hmm, here, right? Mm -hmm, now you've yeah. reached this new audience, you get exactly, more revenue and yeah. the like. <laughs> and so like, how do we know, like with the search side and discovery, like what are the things, the next things I should do? What should I prioritize and the like? Right, right. I think um, a bunch of stuff that Search Console gives you already is kind of, kind of handy for that. You see how certain content works and how certain other content might not work so great. And that can have technical difficulty, uh, sorry, technical reasons, or it can be actually content reasons. So. What we are trying to do is we're trying to also broaden the the perspective a little bit. I mean, you you said that like, oh yeah, we are we're in this metric right now. We want to yeah. improve performance, but actually it has degraded, and it's like, well, it has, but it's not a bad thing because what actually happened is we opened up to more people. Right. That happens with search as well. If you look at it from a more holistic perspective, so if you're right. not just looking at technology, but also at your content strategy. Yeah. And what I would love to uh, see happening is that if we bring this data to where people already are that people become more aware of it, that maybe you should also look at your content and the way you present it and the way you make make sure that you're you're talking to the person on the other end who's trying to solve a purpose, right? Yeah. You're, you're looking for something specific rather than necessarily a specific product. It's like, I, I need this task to be gone and done and dusted and um, how do I do this? Yeah. So I think Bringing the data to other people will help. And I think what developers should look at is 
how they, their content is performing in search engines as well. So how, how often do I show up in search results? Where in the search results do I rank? How many clicks do I get from search results if the content looks like this versus like that? Yeah. So that's something that I hope to bring to more people as well. Cool, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so web components has been another big topic. Oh, right, and, yes. uh, and we released uh, uh, an early version of a new one that I'm super excited about called Virtual Scroller. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, you know, basically for years, web developers have been saying, like, give me a UI table view on the web that can yes. perform and scales with mm -hmm. the DOM. And, um, and so we feel like we're going to be able to deliver that. Um, but then what's that going to mean in the SEO world? Is, is Search going to be able to understand lot. this mm -hmm. if it's all virtual? Yeah. And like, as we kind of push the bar here for right. performance and user experience, right. well, how do we make sure we don't leave behind? I think what a lot of people outside of, of our sphere don't realize is that we are working um, hand in hand. It's not like SEO versus or search versus the browser teams. We are trying to figure out how we can work with a web platform rather than against it. We are using the web platform. Yeah. We, are, we, are, we are basically running a browser, if you wish. Yeah. Um, so we are actually looking into things like web components and um, virtual scroller specifically. And I think it's a fantastic thing, because we have literally just released documentation for lazy loading, yeah. with, or infinite scroll, whatever you want to call it. Basically, you, you know the drill. Like You yeah. have a page with a bazillion images or product listings. You can't have them all on the page right yeah. away. right? <laughs> you want to make sure that as the user goes through the content, um, they come back. Well, how often did it happen to you that someone sent you a link? <laughs> so it's like, have you seen this product? And then you go to the link, and you see a lot of things, but not that product. Right, totally. And then they go, oh, yeah, you have to scroll down for a few minutes. Right. That's not good, not good. right? Web components are another thing that we are like really careful about. And we have some guidance out there already. And we expect to give more guidance as well. Because if you build new web components from scratch, they look like they're semantic, but they're not necessarily semantic in the strongest sense, right? If it's a button that just happens to look like a button, but really is a diff underneath. Yeah. You lose a lot of the accessibility features, yeah. and, and so does Search also loses a bunch of the semantics behind it. So right now, we are recommending putting the content, the, the meaty bits of your content, like the actual, well, what it is about, put that into the light DOM, and then do use the shadow DOM and your components for presentation. Virtual Scholar is a specific, interesting case where it not only is presentation, but also the way of the, how the content gets loaded and the content behaves. So we're working on figuring out how to make that consistent with search so that you don't have to worry about using these new technologies because we're really excited about them as well. Yeah, no, that's great. How yeah. do you feel about, I keep longing for a world in the future where we add with web components these different semantics, mm -hmm. um, kind of high level semantics that uh, search can understand, but also assistants can understand. Yes. So we can get further into transactions and the yes. like. We've got a notion of, you know, I really want to be able to go onto a commerce experience and say, I want to buy a T-shirt for Martin. Mm -hmm. And everything is brokered in a way that it knows your T-shirt size, yes. even if I don't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's a person tag yes. and all these different yes. things. And then you get a great UI from it yeah. too, because it's standardized, but then search could use that, and assistant could do full transactions if we yes. do that. Yeah. Um, and if it was like that would be a way for assistants to kind of reach the long tail versus trying to go to yeah. everyone who's building a website that's got a lot of work to do as it is, mm. and we're asking them to modernize this and fix your performance and do this for discovery, <laughs> and also build this thing for the yeah, assistant. That is true. Um, do you feel like we'll, we'll ever get there? I think we get there probably quicker than, than we think, because conveniently, we have already pushed the idea of using structured data to expose like a bunch of information on your pages in a way that yeah. not only our crawlers can understand them, but also anyone else who basically parses this information. And we're using schema.org for that. So we use like a standardized format rather than just a, pri a proprietary yeah. thing. So I hope that gets more adoption. And we see it both picked up by developers and by these assistant systems. Yeah. Because then you can use the web really powerfully, because you have all the semantic data that you can just pull together and then package in such an experience as you explain like the, the full end-to-end -end commerce, for instance. Cool. Nice. Man, thank you so much. Thank this you, Martin. Uh, thank you. See? Developer and SEO don't have to be um, <laughs> contradicting each other. Also, the, the iced tea is pretty not good. <laughs> pretty watery. But it's, it's, it has the fantastic right color. Like, you picked the exact correct prop.